This is the first of two classes that we're spending on time and interest rates. Now let's review a term from what we've learned from previously, which is liquidity. And remember, liquidity is the degree to which an asset can be quickly bought or sold without affecting the asset's price. So if you have a home and you need to sell it tomorrow, you'll probably need to discount the price significantly. But if you have, say, a savings account, it's relatively easy to transfer the money out and be able to spend it in a checking account or in cash. However, this is also true with, say, liabilities. So a credit card example, let's say you spend money on, on your credit card. What happens to the credit card company's liquidity when you do that? Liquidity goes down or up, up or down? It goes down. The credit card company paid for what you swiped your credit card for, and they've assumed risk. And so they're rewarded for it, and they're, they're rewarded for it with a, a cut of the purchase price, as well as charging interest from you if, if you don't pay your credit card bill in full. And so the credit card company gives up liquidity, assumes risk, and then is, is paid for that. In a sense, it's, they are renting out their money. Also from the links below, uh, what do we mean by time value of money? That, that's a phrase that's kicked around a lot. It means how the passage of time affects the liquidity of money and thus its value. So the time value of money is closely linked to two concepts called present value and future value. So what does present value mean? Present value means if you were to receive, say, $1,000 two years from now, what is that worth today? Well, it's going to be a number that's less than $2,000. What does future value mean? Future value means you have $2,000 today. What is it going to be worth in the future, two years from now, let's say? And one of the, the key insights to present and future value that I've discovered that we'll discuss a little bit later is this using indifference as the key to understanding the two. So it's a pretty fun concept. So here's a quick example of time value of money. If instead of spending money, you could say invest it or, or rent it out, rent out your money, and that way you, it will be worth more later and you can buy more with it. Conversely, you could borrow money and you could pay for something now, but then you're going to need to pay interest on that. And so over the long term, you tend to have less money to spend. So very simplified example of time value of money. Now again, does interest, does that apply to revenue or expenses? The answer is yes. Interest can either work for you or against you. When does it work for you? Well, when it's an asset and you're renting out your money. When does it work against you? Is when it's a liability and you're renting someone else's money. And this leads us to compound interest, which is truly a wonder of the world. And you know what? If someone put a quote next to Albert Einstein on the internet, it must be true, as we all know. So what is this wonder of the world of compound interest? Well, let's use an example. Let's invest $100 at 10% interest. And if you're quick on the math, after one year, how much do you have? Well, that's $110. If you're really quick on your math, after two years, how much do you have? Well, then you would have $121. Well, you'd be like, okay, whoop de doo that's $121. Well, how does compound interest work? Let's say your grandmother decides to invest $1,000 at 8% at an 8% return towards your retirement for you to use 100 years from the time of investment, okay? How much do you have at the end of this process? I'd like you to just take a guess. $1,000 at 8% for 100 years. Is it going to be... $10,000 or $25,000, maybe even a whopping $50,000? The answer is about $2.2 .2 million, which is pretty fantastic if you are that child, grandchild of that grandma. That's pretty fantastic. 
So the compound interest, the nature of it is that at the beginning, it's at $1,000. After 10 years, it's over $2,000. 20 years, 4, 30, 10, 40 years, 21,000, 50 years, 46,000. And it's growing, 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 growing until after 100 years, you end up with $2.2 million. An ancient proverb illustrating this point is an old Indian proverb about a man who played chess against the king. And he said to the king, if I win, what I would like is if would be a grain of rice in the first square and then double that in the next square and double that in the square after that and double that in the square after that until we get all the way across the entire board. Well, the king said, okay, and then the king lost. And so how much rice did this man demand? Well, it was enough to cover basically all of India <laughs> in you know multiple meters of, of rice. And it was just this astronomical amount. And according to some tellings of the story, the king then killed him. So careful how you use compound interest. Another example of compound interest is from the book, uh, the popular personal finance book, The Richest Man in Babylon. It's this ancient advice. And the ancient advice that you see here is, is don't eat your children. And beyond that, it's don't eat your grandchildren either. Now, they're, they're not discussing cannibalism. I don't know about ancient Babylon and cannibalism, but this is not what they were advocating or trying to prevent cannibalism. Rather, that if we go back to our example, if you invest $100 at 10%, after a year, you end up with $110. Well, now you let your new $10 work for you. So instead of getting $10 in your next year, you get $11. And then you get 100, then you end up at 133 and 146, 161, 177, 194, 214, 235, that it's growing at an increasing rate. It's that hockey stick that we saw in the previous graph. So that if you don't eat your children or say, don't spend the $10, reinvest the $10 after the first year and don't eat your grandchildren either, let the $11 keep working for you. And you do that over and over. You can have that compound interest work in your favor. You can have the hockey stick work in your favor. Now you may be thinking, I want more math. All right, I will give it to you. So here's the formula. The amount that you have in the future is going to be the amount that you invest right now times one plus the interest rate to the power of the number of periods. And what you can do, you can just adjust the rate and the, the R and the N, the rate and the number of periods for the problem that you're working with. So let's go through some examples and some different situations. So let's do a practice question. What is the future value of $1,000 at 7% interest five years from now? Well, the present value, the principal invested is $1,000. The rate is 7%. So 1,000 times 1.07 to the fifth power comes out a little over $1,400. So the future value is $1,402. Now we're not confined to just years. We could do months, we could do quarters, we could do six months. However we want to, we just need to adjust so that the rate and the number of periods matches. So let's say you have $100 on a credit card and that com compounds 1% monthly. You pay, let's say nothing on it. I do not recommend doing this. So how much do you owe after one year? Well, you would have 100 times 1.01 .01 to the 12th power. Now, what if we go the opposite direction? What if we're calculating present value instead of future value? Well, what is the, let's use an example. What is the present value of receiving $1,000 at 7% interest five years from now. So you're going to receive $1,000 five years from now. What is it worth to you today? Well, we're going to rearrange our formula from before. Just do some algebra tricks and we end up with present value equals future value times one over one plus the interest rate to the number of periods. So this would be the future value of $1,000 divided by 1.07 to the fifth power. And if we walk through this, 
we'll find a number of about $713. So what does this mean? If you were to receive $1,000 five years from now, how much would that be worth to you if you required an interest rate, say, of 7%? Well, that would be worth $713. And we'll talk about this in assets, but this is actually how bonds work. With bonds, they promise to pay you an amount in the future, and you pay a certain amount now for the bond, and you receive more in the future.